Thank you for joining us here on the Impact Post Show. Another huge night of action here in London, Ontario, Canada, on the heels of Under Siege. The knockouts just continue to dominate things here in Impact Wrestling. Oh, absolutely incredible from top to bottom. We've got Trinity here now. We're building to against the lots, the slam anniversary. There's so much on the horizon, and the knockouts division gets better and better. Yeah, we're going to talk about the knockouts world champion, Deanna Perrazzo, and Trinity, and slam anniversary in a little bit. But first off, I want to talk about our main event that we saw tonight, Subculture versus the Motor City Machine Guns, a first time ever dream match that no one could have seen coming because frankly, the Motor City Machine Guns came out here earlier this evening, Saban and Shelly, they wanted a piece of the Impact World Champion Steve Macklin and Bully Ray. Bully and Macklin wanted no part of them. Well, you know what? I almost wanted to jump in there. After everything that happened back at Under Siege, you yes. know very, very well, I almost wanted to jump in there with the Motor City Machine Guns and get a piece of Bully Ray and all that, but yeah, no, of course, the skull of the dogs, take the high road, if you will. Not the high road, yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. Lo and behold, and thankfully, Subculture came out after having that incredible match with the Impact World Tag Team Champions at Under Siege, and then challenged the Motor City Machine Guns, a dream match for them, which I feel like the Motor City Machine Guns are a dream match for any tag team out there. Agreed. In the world, so they're, they're like, they're doing these dream matches for everybody. ABC was a dream match, you know, subculture now. And of course, it's always so damn good. Well, listen, I was kind of, you know, a little tongue in cheek talking about, hey, both teams were in black and white tonight. You even talked about it, the influence of the Motor City Machine Guns on everybody. teams like our reigning tag team champions, the ABC, but also subculture. They had a great performance at Under Siege, and I'm so glad to see them stick around. And on top of that, Danny Luna as well in competition here on Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Frankly, it was a great tag team matchup in a wide open tag team division right now. The ABC have got to have their eyes on what's going down at Against All Odds and the good hands coming after their Impact World Tag Team titles. Now, I want to come back to what we were talking about in regards to Macklin and Bully Ray. They came out earlier on tonight because of after what happened in the main event of Under Siege and the aftermath. It was bloody, it was gory, it was savage. I'm calling it blood in the arena. The way that Bully Ray and Macklin dismantled the president of Impact Wrestling, Scott Demore, was horrendous. Oh, no, no, God, no, not this! Macklin setting up Demore! You absolute bastards! You've not fully gotten the opportunity to express yourself after what happened to you that night. I mean, Tom, look, I, I said little bits I could out of the state I was in that night. But, you know, I've been one of Macklin's, you know, I've been one of Macklin's biggest proponents. Every chance I could get, even when he did things you didn't like, maybe the world didn't like, I was always there because I knew how hard he worked. I knew what he wanted to get done. I knew he could get it done, even if it was a little unlike what most people wanted to see. But that was one step too damn far. I saw that lighter fluid come out of the bag and come freaking on, man. He didn't need to do, that was my whole point. He didn't need to do that. He could get it done his way. Uh, and listen, he was threatening to light you on fire. He was threatening to light PCO on fire. He did light Scott Demore on fire and Scott Demore is still in critical condition after what happened at Under Siege. And now we know about what's happening with Macklin and Shelley for the Impact World Championship one week from tomorrow, live on Impact Plus, Fight TV and YouTube for Ultimate Insiders at Against All Odds in Columbus, Ohio. Macklin defending the Impact World title against Shelley. But now it's created this interesting scenario at Against All Odds, the eight for one match will determine the next challenger to the Impact World Championship comes Slammiversary. Bully Ray believes that's going to be him. He and seven other guys are all going to get in there. 8-4-1, they're going to have to team for part of the matchup. It breaks down into a four-way matchup. One winner remains. That is a whole several layers of things they're going to have to work through to get to the number one contendership, though. Yeah, Bully Ray wants to humiliate this company at Slammiversary. Meanwhile, Nick Aldis wants to finally get back to the Impact World Championship come Slammiversary. When we come back here on the Impact Post Show, we're going to dive more into what happened with the knockouts this evening here on Access TV. Against the winds of doubt and the storms of uncertainty, we persist. We forge ahead. We don't wait for permission. On June 9th, we create our own rules. Defying the odds is not just a choice. It's the only way. We refuse to accept mediocrity. Instead, we conquer and thrive. 
Impact Wrestling presents Against All Odds. Live June 9th on Impact Plus and Fight. Our coverage continues here at ringside. The fans filing out here in London, Ontario, Canada. So much was broken tonight in regards to news for Against All Odds one week from tomorrow in Columbus, Ohio. That night, we will see the first ever knockouts dog collar match. Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly will be chained together by the neck. The only way to win is via pinfall or submission. How do you think that this exploded the way that it did? I mean, we've seen it exploding week after week. I mean, you take two personalities like Killer Kelly. Again, her name is literally Killer Kelly. And after everything we've seen Masha Slamovich do over the last year or so, destroying people left and right. And if you follow anything Masha Slamovich does, she does it with violence. She does it with aggression. So this is right up both their alleys. And it comes on the heels of a tradition of this matchup. This is a brutal matchup. I mean, Greg Valentine, Roddy mm -hmm. Piper, in this company, people like Raven and Abyss tearing each other apart. Now, Slamovich and Kelly get to add to that legacy. That is that is going to be a brutal one to watch. I just think it's so interesting that it was hardcore war at Rebellion in April in Toronto yeah. that we saw those two first really start to mess with each other, and it just seemed like two that had the exact same mindset but opposing forces. Yeah, I think they like it. They I think do that's, like a, that's it. the thing yeah. is that they finally found their polar opposite or magnetic opposite or whatever that just. Boom, brought them together, and the beautiful chaos that ensued has turned into this. The unstoppable force meets the immovable object, and let's not forget they were brawling throughout this very arena right here in London, Ontario, at Under Siege. So that is going to culminate at Against All Odds in the first ever Knockouts dog collar match. Also tomorrow night at Against All Odds, it's going to be a very tricky situation because Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans are teaming up against Slammiversary opponents, the Knockouts World Champion, Deanna Perrazzo and Trinity. That's gonna go down one week from tomorrow in Columbus, Ohio. Let's start with this tag team match. Shaw and Evans, they've gone after Trinity and come up short. How do they move forward? They move forward by getting a win over the Knockouts World Champion, and I guess the, the number one contender You understand Trinity. what you just said, I know, however, I know. Right? You're, I'm talking about Deanna Perrazzo. Of course yeah. I know what I just said. However, here's my point. I feel like I say this a lot Any when we get into these kind of scenarios where future opponents for a night team up, right? Sometimes it, it can work out real good, but if you're telling me that Trinity and Deanna Perrazzo, as much respect as they have for each other, respect is great, I love respect, but in the back of their minds, they know Slammiversary's on the horizon. They know they're going to be facing each other for the richest prize in the knockouts division. So that's going to that's gonna cause little microscopic fissures, even if they don't want to recognize it. Meanwhile, Evans and Shaw, that's a well-oiled machine. It, it, that is going to be an interesting tag team match, if it's say the least, one week from tomorrow at Against All Odds. But I can't state this enough. What we are going to see at Slammiversary is going to be monumental in the history of this company. Not only are we going to celebrate our Slammiversary on July 15th in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, live on pay-per-view, Fight TV, and DAZN internationally, but for it to be headlined right now, with Perrazzo and Trinity in a first time ever matchup for the Knockouts World Championship. I think it's perfect. It's extremely fitting, especially the year that the Knockouts have had here. This has been the year of the Knockouts in 100%. 2023. Thank you all so much for joining us here for our extended coverage. This has been the Impact Post Show.